We've been wanting them for years, and now they're finally here. Generation 4 Remakes The original Diamond and Pearl games came out almost 15 years ago already, but they have been my personal favorite games ever since, so it's safe to say that I'm pretty excited for these remakes. So excited in fact, that I decided to make a video about the top 5 things that I would want to see them have included. I am aware that Nintendo stated that these games are gonna be fateful remakes, but I think it's safe to assume there are gonna be at least a few changes. Either way, speculating is fun and intros are not, so let's get into N's top 5 hopes for Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Number 5. Stories for the Legendary Pokémon Generation 4 brought us a lot of legendary Pokemon back in the day, but a lot of them were only obtainable through events, which is lame. It would be epic if in this post game we had something like the Delta episode with the Yoxes from the Gen 3 remakes, but with Keratina and the Distortion World. Or maybe an entirely new quest around Darkrai and Cresselia. Even in the form of DLC, this would be awesome, though I would of course prefer it to be in the main game. There's so much potential with this, so Game Freak, please don't do something simple like Hey, if you're my legend Arceus, you'll unlock this new NPC and that will give you an Arceus. No! Make us go on a quest and make it feel like we earned it, dammit. Number 4. A Pokemon Camp Feature. This is a rather simple one, but I am a big fan of features like Pokemon Camp and Pokemon Ami, where you can just interact and play with your Pokemon like you could in Sword and Shield. We didn't really have anything like this in the originals, but I would love to see something like this in the remakes, especially since we weren't able to do it with a lot of awesome Sinnoh Pokemon in Sword and Shield due to the dex cuts. I just want to be able to hug my Fire Monkey and get some third degree burns in the process maybe. Is that too much to ask? Number 3, the Gym Order from Diamond and Pearl and not Platinum. For those of you who don't know, in Pokemon Platinum they changed the Gym Order from the original Diamond and Pearl. In Platinum you go Roark, Gardenia, Fantina, Maylene, Wake, while in Diamond you go Roark, Gardenia, Maylene, Wake, Fantina. Because of this, in Diamond, after you get your second Gym Badge, you'll get access to a lot of open space where there isn't anything blocking your path or interrupting your playthrough and this is honestly my personal favorite part of the game. Whenever I get to a point where I'm unable to progress because there's some story event that I have to do first, I find it kind of annoying. I just wanna run around and explore stuff. Seriously, after Gardenia you'll get access to 19 areas without any interruption and I love that. With Platinum's badge order you're unable to leave Heart Home until you beat the gym which severely limits your freedom and I don't like that. But hey, if they don't do this, it's not that big of a deal, unlike my next point, which being... Number 2. An update to the Pokedex. Most of you probably already know that the Pokedex in the original Diamond and Pearl games was... Kind of shitty. First of all, some types like Fire and Electric had basically no representation in Sinnoh because there were only a few Pokemon of these types available during the main game. And also, a lot of Pokemon gained brand new evolutions but they weren't available during the main game either. Platinum did fix these issues by including all the Pokemon with new evolutions and they even made some awesome unrelated Pokemon available during the main game as well like Swablu, Absol and even Houndoom. Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl must include the Platinum decks because otherwise I'm gonna be severely disappointed. There is actually a pretty high chance of this happening since for those of you who don't know, Porygon Z was shown in the first trailer and the Porygon line was only available in the Platinum decks and not in Diamond and Pearl. I guess that Porygon Z can also be from the post game so it doesn't confirm anything per se. But I do think this was a hint that the original Pokedex will be expanded upon with at least the additions from Platinum. But I'm kind of hoping they don't stop there. It would be great if they expanded on the Pokedex even more with some things like Sylveon, the new Regis and maybe even more Pokemon that are related to anything in Sinnoh but would be awesome to have. Another fire type perhaps? Let's just hope for the best. Number 1. Having your Pokemon in the overworld. Whenever you hear someone talk about their wishes for any Pokemon game, they always mention that they want to have their Pokemon follow them in the overworld. 
It's kind of getting a cliche at this point, but I can blame them because this feature was so immersive and awesome. I don't care about any of my previous points if they include this. Chances are unlikely because the original games didn't have this feature either and we also haven't seen this in the trailers. But I'm pretty sure that was also the case for the Sword and Shield DLC, right? They never told us about the ability to have your Pokemon follow you and when we discarded it while playing in their cells, we all lost our shings out of joy. Or at least we did until we noticed that the feature was kinda broken. Anyway, having your Pokemon follow you was one of the best and immersive features ever and I truly think that if these remakes include it, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl can become the greatest Pokemon games in history. But those are just my hopes and dreams, let me know what yours are in the comments section below. I have other things I really wanna see like the Battle Frontier, TMs not breaking and updated move pools, but these 5 are just the things I personally felt the strongest about. Anyway, I can't wait for these games to come out and I'll let you know my opinion on them once I've played them. So make sure you subscribe for that and also, of course, thanks for watching.